Good evening and um, good evening and welcome everyone for the very first virtual ward for meeting uh, for Gary Screen Ward. My name is Councillor Sadak Mia. Also with me supporting uh, the meeting is uh, uh, Beverly Edmund, uh, so, uh, Community Governance Manager, Yardley District. I hope that everyone will be mindful of this. If if and probably when things don't go as smoothly as we all hope. Unfortunately, there is no opportunity for residents to appear and speak on the video as Teams Live does not allow this. However, you can still take part in the meeting. To do this, type in your question or comments in the uh, Q&A live chat box section. Which will respond if to endeavor to the earliest possible opportunity. Can I first? Given consistent sector of public light of the current welcome, Mariam. Can we get? Can we possibly get an update from you? Certainly. So, um, the latest case rate for. Um, COVID that we have is 74.6 per 100,000 population. So we've been seeing a, a rise in the case rate and the number of cases has been increasing. Um, also, the, the number of the positivity rate has also been increasing. It is now 5.2%, which is quite concerning. Um, and we are also we're testing at the rate of of 1,435 per, per 100,000 of population. The particular areas of Birmingham where the positivity and the number of cases is highest are in Spark Hill, Spark Brook and Balsall Heath, East Hall Green, Adcox Green, and Aston. And what we're beginning to see is that the the number of admissions are also increasing, as are the number of serious cases that hospitals are having to deal with. The greatest number of positive tests has been in the young, but over the past week, there's been an increase in number in amongst the old adults as well that are testing positive. And this is very worrying for us. Um, the number of cases amongst Asian people has remained high and so we are very much aware that we need to make sure that our, that, 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 that our um, BAME communities understand the needs to stay safe and continue to wash their hands and wear their masks where, where they should. The importance of the new arrangements in terms of having a, um, six people and not being able to interact with the other households is really, really important. Um, the, the ways to make sure that you stay healthy through this period of time is to make to is to is to look to eating well. Um, and eating nutritious foods, keeping yourselves active and making sure you sleep and all those things to keep yourself healthy um, and give your chance of a good status of immune health. Um, but, so that's the latest I have for you in terms of um, the situation regarding COVID. Are there any questions? I don't see any question coming up, uh, Mariam. Um, 
No, we don't have any questions. Um, firstly, can I thank you for uh, coming, giving your valuable time and um, coming onto our ward for meeting and give us in, uh, giving us the update. We, pre we appreciate your valuable time. Um, and in future, if we do get any um, questions coming in, I will forward that to you uh, to, to response. So thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope to see you all again sometime soon. Thank you. Bye thank for you. now. Thank you. Bye bye. Um, next, we have uh, my colleague. Um, uh, Councillor John O'Shea. Um, Councillor John O'Shea is the cabinet member of Street Scene Parks, who will give us an update on issues on fly tipping. I have um, Councillor O'Shea, uh, uh, thank you for coming in and uh, giving your valuable time to this World Forum meeting and uh, addressing the, um, the residents of Gary Green. Uh, here in Gary Green, um, obviously, I have dealt with uh, quite a few issues in relation to um, fly tipping. Uh, you are aware of that. Um, and for, uh, another thing I have to say to you, um, the bin collection uh, has improved a lot since in the last uh, year, uh, year, six months. I haven't had a single complaint of uh, bins not being collected, so I'd like to congratulate you on your uh, hard work that you are putting on. Um, but at the moment, fly tipping is a big issue uh, for Gary's Green Wood. Um, so I would request you if you could give us an update, uh, update us on in relation to that. John, thank you. John, I think you are muted. We cannot hear you, John. Sorry, I'm muted. I'm muting myself now. Um, thank you, Sadak, and, and thank you for the work you're doing in Garrett Screen. The information you pass back to the service really helps improve it and make a difference. So uh, please keep keep working on that. Um, well, and thank you for thanking me for keeping the service going. I've got to thank the crews out there who, who have kept it going over the past, where are we now, seven months or so. Um, we started back in March with a, uh, a game plan, quite honestly, to take the service down as uh, we expected to have people go off sick. And because we managed to change how we work, so the crews are starting earlier, starting at staggered times, uh, they're not all going into the depot, so we're trying to keep them as isolated as, as we can from each, from each other. Um, we've not had a problem with, with loss of service. Uh, so we've actually maintained the service and improved it. And that's not to say it's perfect, because I know it's not, but it has massively improved on where we were 18 months ago. Uh, it will carry on getting better. <clears throat> We've got uh, new vehicles coming on, on stream from December this year. Again, they've been delayed because they're due to come back in the spring, but uh, obviously with, with the COVID pandemic and the shutdown, manufacturer wasn't producing them. So we've now got those coming in from uh, December and into next spring, which will improve the reliability of the service. Um, so it is going really, really well at the moment, uh, and that is down to the fact we've got some brilliantly hardworking people out there keeping it functioning in what has been a really difficult time for us, and indeed difficult for the whole city. Problems we, we are facing is that we are facing an increase in the amount of fly tipping and that's not just us, that's uh, across the country. Um, just as an example, uh, in the past few months we've cleared over a thousand tonnes of waste just from our parks, where we normally expect to take about, about 100 tonnes over the same period. We've taken 10 times as much and that's pretty awful. That, that's hugely expensive for us to do. Money we haven't got it in the budget. So it's been very difficult. Uh, and again with fly tipping. Um, I always say this is this is a choice that people make. Uh, the council doesn't fly tip. If you pay a bloke with a van 20 quid to take your rubbish away, 
it's not going to end up at an approved site. It's going to end up in somebody's alley, uh, on the street, uh, in a farm gate somewhere. We had a few weeks ago about 400 chicken carcasses dumped in a field in Sutton Coalfield. Which is pretty awful for the crews to go and clear up, but we had to go and clear that. Uh, we have private landlords who, if they if they throw out a, a short term tenant, will simply pack up stuff into the back of a van and dump it around the corner. Now we want to go after these people, but we need the evidence to do that. And unfortunately, uh, you and I both knowing where that dumped fridge or that dumped sofa came from isn't evidence we can take to court. It has to be beyond reasonable doubt. So we're looking for criminal evidence that we can take to court and we will prosecute. Uh, we've had a couple of successes lately with some camera footage supplied by people in the city uh, and we are taking action against people as a result of that. Uh, if we if you, we get car registration numbers that's or van numbers, that's really helpful. Again, we can go after that and we can seize the vehicle. And these people are not um, lightweight criminals. Some of them are really very serious, very nasty people. What they're doing is a criminal act. The vehicles they use are by and large death traps. We seize probably one a month at the moment. And we actually end up crushing most of them because they are not safe to be on the road. And the people who do it are involved in modern slavery. They, uh, they are involved in drug dealing. We had a, actually managed to get a bloke jailed last year for fly tipping. He dumped 11 tonnes of waste in Hounsworth and he was sent down. But, but before we got to him, they'd already nailed him for armed robbery. So these are not nice people. They're not your friends. They are polluting our city and we will prosecute. We will catch them. But we need your help to do that. And that means we need evidence and we need statements and witnesses to say, I saw this. But we will go after people, but it's difficult without evidence. Uh, if, if there are any questions people have. Um, I do not have any question from residents, John, uh, but it's something that I uh, I would like to ask you. Obviously, there has been a huge increase on fly tipping around Birmingham, as you are saying. Um, what steps are you actually taking or what measure are you taking uh, to tackle or identify these issues uh, that are occurring in our city? John. Well, this year we've secured some extra money, which is a bit of a novelty. We've got some extra extra people coming into our waste enforcement team. Again, this has all been delayed because of the COVID pandemic, but we're now getting a round of recruitment of those extra people who will come in and support us with prosecutions uh, and actually a bit of education as well. Now, I don't want to go in boots first on people, but we will go after you and we will prosecute you and you will pay a fine. If we can get you in jail, we'll get you in jail. So we'll put some more money into that. We're also putting a million pounds into something called Love Your Streets. And that's a program we run elsewhere in the city. But we put a real bit of investment in this year. And that's where we target hotspots. So for a day, we'll send out uh, a couple of crews. We'll have help from Veolia, our partners who dispose of our waste. We'll have waste enforcement out there, talking to businesses. And we'll bring along uh, Keir, who look after the highways for us. And, and we'll just hit a stretch of uh, road, usually around shops. So, or flats where you have uh, rubbish out on the street and we'll clear that up and we'll try and identify the problems and try and educate people a bit and that's that's being being done over the, over the coming year again we've been held back by all of this because of the or all this because of the because of the covid crisis but we're now able to start hopefully a bit more um positive action on that that, that sense so we're putting money into this to try and tackle it because we know how much it matters to you uh and it matters, it matters to me too it matters to people i work with they don't want a city to be filthy. This is my city too. I, I live here just as the DAC does. And I want to be clean and tidy. I want you to live in a decent, clean area. And we will put up the resource that the council has for tackling that. If you can support us by firstly, not using dodgy 
dealers to carry away your rubbish. And also when you do find it, report it. And please, if you get evidence for us, that's really what we need to have. We can go after them. So back. Thank you, John. Thank you for, uh, oh. for that update. Um, um, obviously, as I, I, I have previously mentioned, the, um, the waste collection has improved uh, such a way as that uh, I haven't had in the last, I would say in the last five, six months, I haven't had a single case of um, uh, contact in relation to not beans being collected and things like that. Uh, so I like to praise you on the hard work you're um, and I would like to prove to you. Um, this is some mixed messages uh, in relation to the hay mills depot. This is a, uh, making access to obviously uh, the older generation uh, do not have smartphones or um, any other uh, computer or laptop to book online. Uh, what measure or what support are you giving to those people uh, to make it easy for them to use the depot? John. So, Dak, I'm really sorry you broke up quite badly there. I, I didn't, didn't get the question. Could you possibly repeat it for me? OK, sorry, John. This could be the line, uh, the internet. Uh, what the, what the question was, um, the hay mills depot, I mean, obviously we have a new measure, you have put in a new measure of booking online before yeah. before somebody can take their waste uh, to put, um, put in, into the depot. Um, obviously a lot of, a lot of my residents, are elderly residents that are, are, are unable to access uh, internet or smartphone to book online. Um, could you explain or could you um, tell me what measures you have taken uh, for uh, for them to have an easy accessible um, to use that service? Thank you, John. Thanks, Sadak. Um, just to explain what happened. Uh, uh, oh, when, when the lockdown came in, uh, pretty much every household recycling centre in the country, every tip was closed. Uh, and around the, st the start of June, uh, we were able to reopen ours in line with some safe pr uh, processes to ensure that the people working there and the visitors to the site were kept safe and um, to maintain separation and everything else. Now that means that we could only take, at that point, probably about a fifth of the normal throughput of cars that we get at any of our sites. And uh, we have five sites across the city, which is more than most councils do. Most councils tend to have one site. Now, a few of them brought in a booking facility from the start. Uh, I have to say, we weren't confident that it would work well with the volume of, of, of work or trade that our, site, our, our sites deal with and, and having five different sites. So we initially opened up um, and people queued and they were queued for two or three hours quite regularly. Uh, which was causing a real problem for businesses and residents around all five of the sites. Uh, we then worked with, again, worked with Veolia who managed them on our behalf and we, we talked to Leeds who, who brought in a booking system and we nicked that basically. Um, I think we got it taking good practice, but we stole that idea from them and it, uh, that's now in place. It has been in place since, since uh, end of June or so. And that allows us to control the, the flow through this number of through the sites. We've actually seen uh, an increase in the number of slots we can make available because we now know people aren't going to turn up. We have an idea how many that number is, so we can increase the number of slots to cope with that. And as we change the, the processes in the sites, then we can increase the number. So we we're up by about 30% on where we were. Uh, and typically, um, the Tysley site, when you're talking about, uh, that's now got booking times down to probably a couple of days. It was running at full capacity um, over the past week or so. Uh, you can probably get in with about three days notice now. So that, that's that's much improved. It is at the moment virtually only online booking. Uh, there is a facility that if uh, we have a particular case, Sadak, 
where nobody can book book online, then we we can arrange something. Um, but essentially, that that is a very small uh, call centre that the earlier run that is not able to cope with the volumes of lots of people calling in. But we could, in a particular case, we can help with that. But anybody can can book uh, a visit. So there's no reason why you couldn't book it for somebody else, as long as you know their details and, and they go along in the right vehicle and with some identification, that's fine. It hasn't got to be them that books it. Uh, so anyone could book it. A friend can do it, a neighbour can do it. People can, I think people now go down to the local libraries and book it. So th there are plenty of ways of getting in there. It's very straightforward. There are now slots available across most of the city uh, within a couple of days. Uh, so. We, we, we're not changing it at the moment um, and Roman, I'm afraid we're also not able to offer a, a phone booking service on a regular basis. If you have specific cases, I can happily pick those up and get those sorted out. But on a regular basis, but we, we, we really encourage people to use the online version, online booking system. And I would say we, we've had about 80% approval of that. Uh, the survey was done around the Lifford Lane site. And that showed massive approval for this booking system because it, it takes away the queues. You know you'd be able to drive up at the time you're allotted, drive straight in, dump your rubbish properly and safely and, and leave again. And there, there is no queuing at all now. Uh, you have got to prepare and, and book ahead, but we do that in so many things now anyway. Uh, if, I, if, I, if I went to being I went to being queued the other weekend, I had to queue for half an hour to get into being queued. Uh, if you want to book into, book into a restaurant, you've got to book. You can't just turn up and do things at the moment. Uh, and as the same with our HRCs, I'm afraid that's not going to change in the near future. Our, our role is to keep the people who use them safe and keep our staff safe. Thank you John, for your important update. Uh, that makes it clear because I had uh, one, or, one or two residents that actually have um, uh, asked me uh, this issue um, and I have said the same thing that um, if they if they find it difficult to contact me so that I can make arrangement um, yeah, for that to be um, booked in. So uh, appreciate um, uh, appreciate very much uh, today you're coming in and updating us with um, all the information that you have given us um, uh, on behalf of ourselves and the residents of Garris Green. We'd like to thank you. Thank you, John. John, did you hear me? Yes, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm live though. There we go. OK, yes. Uh, I, on, behalf of, on behalf of myself and the um, residents of Gary Screen, we'd like to thank you for your update on all the information that you have provided us and given us the valuable time. Thank you, John, and keep up with the good work. But thank you, Sadak, and uh, thank you to your residents. And one more thing I'd like to say is the other part of my, my task, my job is uh, parks, and we have seen a 130% increase in the number of visitors to our parks over the past uh, few months. And that shows how much the people of Birmingham value great parks that we've got. Um, for many people it's been their only green space they can access and access safely and there's been great city people out there enjoying themselves in, in, in the parks so that's been the good bit of the job. That's the, that's, that's, that's the fun that's the fun stuff. But thank you for inviting me along. Always a pleasure to come along and thank you for what you did for Garrett's Green. Thank you John and we'll see you very soon. Um, now we'll, I will update um, you um, on on uh, Garrett's screen. Uh, it will be my update. Um, firstly, um, this last few weeks, oh, sorry, few months have been uh, unprecedented time for our city. Over a thousand people in Birmingham have tragically died from this troubled pandemic. Um, the largest death toll in, in this city from a single event since the Second World War 
our thoughts and praise go out to everyone, uh, our family and our loved ones. Yet some way, uh, lockdown has also shown us the best of Birmingham, especially Gary Green, where we have seen a great community spirits, kindness, compassion, residents have donated food to food bank and delivering shopping to their vulnerable neighbors who are shielding. Looking, looking after our most, sorry, our, our frontline workers, our frontline workers in school and hospitals and care home have looked after our city, most vulnerable people at a, such a difficult time, not to mention our transport uh, workers, bean workers and stop, shop staff who are helping us stay safe and keeping Birmingham going. I have, I have few other um, issues that uh, the residents have um, have uh, passed on to me in relation to uh, increase of uh, antisocial behaviour uh, in in Gareth Green Ward. Um, I have I have I myself and uh, uh, Jess, uh, our MP Jess Phillips. Have intervened into um, uh, intervene with this issue uh, with uh, housing, uh, especially uh, near to the um, the old college road, where uh, we are talking with um, Century, the housing uh, um, team, uh, to look into uh, why there is a, a increase in this. And I have also have um, contacted the local police, uh, the police team, and I have involved them and notified them with the issues that we have with antisocial behavior in, in Gary Screen. Um, unfortunately, it has increased um, through the uh, pandemic, but we're trying to address uh, that issue. I have tried um, to bring in the sergeant um, of, of Gary Screen Ward because it's split into two parts. Um, we do not have a surgeon for uh, Sheldon yet, but um, in, in the future meeting, hopefully they will be able to come in and uh, give us an update on relation to that. Uh, there was another big issue that was in relation to the oh, uh, former police station uh, in Sheldon Heath um, Road. Um, obviously, it's been it has been gone on for quite uh, quite some time, and recently there was a planning application uh, made by the developers, um, and uh, yeah, we, uh, the uh, the council, um, uh, the planning department has um, uh, not approved the planning. The um, the developer once again failed in their. Uh, attempt to turn the old police station uh, into uh, multiple um, support accommodation. The largest, uh, the latest in the series of application have been denied after the city planners uh, agreed with myself that the proposal was wrong for this location. Uh, this is a correct decision for both the local residents and the, uh, the intended occupants. The building is in, in, in clear visible location, which is totally unsuitable, unsuitable for vulnerable tenants. While the no, noise and disturbance that would uh, accompany such a development would be a negative. And the impact of the existing residents, so that has been uh, declined and um, I've, uh, that, that has been refused. Um, and today's is today is our first meeting on Teams, so I do apologize for um, any any anything that I must might have missed out. 
uh, in future we will try and um, improve uh, the meeting um, and if you do have any questions uh, please um, either email uh, email it to me or if you can contact the office and um, put your um, questions or issue through to three to in, um, I would like to thank you all. Um, uh, I would like to thank um, everyone that has put this meeting together, worked hard, uh, tirelessly worked hard for putting this meeting together and um, hope to see you all soon. Thank you.